good morning to everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I, I really want to say to you, maybe you will be very disappointed because I will not talk about injuries, although I did my PhD about these, about ACL injuries in female handball players. I started with this. And now I will talk, I'll talk about something completely different. So sorry to disappoint you. Well, but uh, well, when I first heard about this conference, I saw scientific approach to the playing environment. So if you add two extra words there, young and quality, maybe my talk now makes sense, a little bit more sense. <laughs> well, we all know that handball is a fast-paced game played in a complex dynamic and time pressure environment. Requires players to anticipate and to make decisions faster than their opponents to get an effective time-space advantage. Those who make quicker, creative, and more accurate decisions are recognized as intelligent players. And usually we put these players in key playing positions, like in the certain back position, and they usually play as playmakers. But the point is, is this gameplay intelligent, trainable? Are these innate traits? Well, in fact, those who believe that players born with, its, this, with a certain kind of court vision and intelligent to play handball are the ones who play more effort in, the tat in detecting the best talented players instead of developing these kind of skills. Well, when we look to the theoretical background about teaching and coaching young players and how to teach to play handball, in fact, there are two different worlds. The traditional approach, that is a technical-oriented approach. Mainly, it is a behavior approach. It means that the kids are taught to play or are taught to learn the technical skills in isolation. It means that out of playing contest, and then they, have, they are challenged to use them while playing. Uh, on the other hand, there is a new trend, new trends that talk about a game-centered approach. It means that when we want kids to play handball, we must, we want them first to like the game, to appreciate the game, to understand the game. It means that they need to know what to do, when to do, before knowing how to do it. Then I'm talking about the technical skill. Well, but you may argue with me that there are a lot of quite successful coaches that are using this traditional approach. Yeah, it's true. And they run set play after set play, and most of the time they discourage the players from reading the game and to think to find clever solution. Even with youth, we can say the, we can saw this. These schemes of play are taught before, sometimes before beginners can really grasp their significance from a technical and strategical point of view. Well, the fact is this, despite these new trends, potential to educate young players to become more intelligent, skillful, and creative, the handball looks quite traditional, okay? Uh, it means that the handball teaching coaching often appears to be trapped in a time warp where the old traditional idea concepts methods are continually recyc recycled. It means that they are more focused on the coach than on the kids' needs to learning. Well, because I work at university, I was aware of this. I was exposed to these new approaches, mainly through my colleagues from football and from basketball. And I have to confess that in the beginning, I was quite suspicious about these ideas. Do they really work? Because I was exposed to this when I was a player. Then, step by step, while I was teaching others to teach handball, while I was teaching uh, young students from my university to coach handball, I started to change my beliefs, my concepts, my methods, my ideas. And now I cannot find another way to teach. That's the way. So, may I need to drink a little bit water? <laughs> I know I'm, I need to be fast like in handball, sorry. Otherwise, I don't have time. Well, what we need, what I think it was our goal and our task is, well, this is the theoretical field. This is a theoretical concept. How we can put these ideas on the practice? How we can help practitioners to really use this theoretical knowledge? Are they able to use these ideas to improve the teaching and the coaching? That's what I did. 
And then we develop a certain way of teaching handball at school. We develop an approach where we look to handball using these ideas. So we try to bridge, to link the theory with the practice. So we develop our own way to do it. And uh, while we advise teachers and coaches not to use it like a recipe, it's not a pill, it's just a guide, it's just an instrument to help them to try these new approaches. And then we should look, they think, they should learn to think about what they are doing, if they are really being effective in teaching, if the kids are improving. If not, stand back and go again and look to your training session, but maybe there is a problem. Well, just briefly, the main idea is this. All kids, they want to play handball. When they come to training session, they ask, when we play? When they go to lessons, when they play? They want to play, like us. We, they want all to play. But we need to change the game. We need to shape the complexity, the demanding of the game to make it suitable for kids, to make it challenging, challenge, to make them to have fun and to have success while playing. Because if they enjoy the game, then they will go again to training session and they'll go further and they'll, then they, they will stay there until they are adults. So the idea is, so let's find what kind of game we should present them that is suitable for them, then let them play. Then stand back. This is really important to teach coaches and physical educators. Stand back. Do not do this with the kids. Pass there, go there. No, stand back. Observe. Look what they don't know. What are the game problems? What they need to learn next to improve the game quality? So the learning tasks must be linked with the game problems that they are facing while they are playing. So after they are challenged again to try to improve the game play quality. Well, just briefly, main ideas that maybe some of you are aware. Focus on game play quality, understanding play skillfully. Scaffolding learning, it means that the learning process must be challenging without overwhelming the kids. More diversity, in fact, repetition. Yes, repetition is important, but without repeating. More small-sided game, more game-like tasks linked with the level of play. We talk now today about situated learning, functional exercises, not only about tactical, but also about motor and technical skills. We advise them to active exploration of playing solution and to learn from the mistakes. And this is really important. The mistakes are key aspects in teaching because the kids must have the opportunity to make mistakes, to realize how was the playing scene, why they did the mistakes and try to, to explore other solutions because that's what will bring new knowledge, new tactical knowledge, more understanding, more uh, competence to play successfully. And, well, really, really important, more fun, more emotion, more enjoy. Well, um, this is somehow linked with problem-solving approach that we talk about in uh, education. Uh, and you more guided discovery and questioning instead of using direct instructions. What we are talking about is that the teacher or the coach should help kids to read the game and it should use more questioning, more guided discovery instead of saying, go there, pass, shoot. This does not help kids to understand the game. So stimulate more initiative, creativity and responsibility on the part of learner. Well, um, now we are, you are talking, we are thinking about what this is, research action project that we use. Um, this is, you are not quite familiar with this. You are mainly used to, to use uh, more quantitative approaches that the kind of studies that we saw here. Uh, this is quite different. We are using this a lot in education because we want to change practice. It means that while I'm, I'm making some kind of intervention, I should learn uh, to make some kind of research about what I'm doing and to learn from my own experience that what I did here. So um, I'm, I'm the lecturer and investigator of this uh, small research. I work with uh, about 68 PE teachers and coaches. This short experience was conducted in European country that I will not reveal because of ethical uh, uh, questions and more. So what we did here, uh, we. I had the opportunity to work with a huge amount of PE teachers and coaches where I taught these new approaches to them during four full days. 
And then I had the opportunity to visit them one month later, and I went to each club, each uh, school, and I had the opportunity to work with them in their real practice settings, uh, where I had the opportunity to observe what they were doing in the practice and to do some kind of cooperation uh, between a group that was not exposed to these kind of ideas and a group that was exposed to these ideas one month before this. So what I did was, well, while I was there, I was studying what they are doing. So I observed what they are doing. I used also a video to record what they did. In, in each city after these practice sessions, we did a meeting. We called this a focus group. We also used this to make some kind of research. Um, I also uh, documented everything that happened as much as I can, writing, recording, everything to study after. And I did a quantitative analysis to get some information based on this kind of intervention. But what I found at the end, well, those who were not exposed to this kind of uh, instruction procedures, uh, they presented highly structured practice sessions where the player were taught to stay and move in a very organized, controlled and protected way. In fact, there was no noise. It looks more like work, but there also no fun, no emotion. Well, most of the time, only few players were doing something where the others were waiting for their turn and we could mainly hear the voice of the coach saying, do this, do that. And there's another very important aspect, that is the game. Why the game? I asked them to do at least 20 minutes of game during these sessions. And uh, why I wanted to see the game? Because like in football, we say like this, you play like you train, and you should train like you play. So when they, they play, I realize what kind of approach they are using because I know, I see what the kids are able to do or not. So in this country, I saw mainly kids being exposed to seven against seven. Where <laughs> <laughs> so I ended. <laughs> okay. Um, so these kids in this um, full game, uh, they only the back players were having fun the pivot was an extra defender. The pivots are, are uh, mainly passing balls. Um, and in the other side, I saw more diversity, more fun, more confusion, but uh, more, more activity, in fact. So, well, in uh, this somehow controlled group, the kids were passing, receiving, or doing skills, some kind of autopilot auto behavior. In the other side, we saw more small sided games, more fun games, more, uh, more exercise like the real game. So, well, I saw some kind of uh, change here. Uh, I don't know if this will stay long because I was there and they really wanted to do it because I was watching. Uh, but it was interesting to see that at least they tried to change. Well, uh, we can move. <laughs> Well, uh, this uh, tactical based approach is much more demanding on teachers and coaches because they really need to understand the game. They really need to be watching the game and see what they are not being able to do. It's much more demanding on them. But I think this is much more interesting, more rewarding for kids, for learning, for becoming intelligent players. And I just uh, want to tell you also that this developing intelligent play is a hard and long process that sometimes does not lead to immediate success. So in, other, in the other hand, it's much more easier to use this analytical, technical-based approach where the players are trained to use predeterminate moves and they can be quite successful in the youth categories. But uh, tactical, tactical knowledge, gameplay competence is completely different from successful inside plays from my point of view. And that's it. Thank you.